Welcome everybody to our webinar today. Um, this webinar will focus on marketing your SACNIS chapter. So my name is Eric Uriel. I'm the SACNIS National Chapters Manager here at SACNIS. Uh, and today I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Lauren Schoenard. Um, she's our social media and public relations manager here at SACNIS. Um, for today's webinar, um, we're basically going to go over uh, SACNIS branding, um, best practices for um, using proper branding and marketing your SACNIS chapter. Um, this is going to include um, going over toolkit for proper chapter logos and the official chapter colors. Um, and then we're also going to provide you tips um, on just in general marketing your chapter and then tips on social media and how to increase uh, your member engagement. Um, I do want to remind you that we are accepting uh, we're also going to have a Q&A section at the end. Um, so throughout the webinar, you can uh, use the Q&A feature to submit questions and we will address those during the Q&A section. Um, so SACNUS is a fully inclusive organization dedicated to achieving true diversity in STEM, uh, where the field reflects the demographics of our country's population. And uh, there are lots of ways that you can get involved with SACNUS. Um, as the nation's largest multicultural and multidisciplinary STEM diversity organization, we're creating a space where members and partners and staff feel as though they can belong and embrace and celebrate all of their intersectional identities. Um, as a reminder, all chapter members are required to have a SACNUS membership, and you can actually sign up for free with us. Um, all you have to do is visit uh, sacnus.org slash memberships and sign up uh, for a free membership or any of our other uh, membership tiers. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, Sacnus chapter branding. Uh, branding is very important uh, so that people in and outside of the Sacnus community can identify, recognize, and associate your activities and publications specifically to your chapter and what makes your chapter special. One moment. Yes. Um, so these are the official SACNIS colors um, that you should consider when you are creating publications and merchandise for your chapter. Um, so don't worry about writing down the uh, color tags right now. We will send out this uh, recording and that will have um, a link to the uh, chapter colors. Um, these are different from the colors that we use as a national chapter. So these really will set you apart. Yeah, and I also will share at the very end of this webinar, like the links on our website where you can find uh, some of those toolkits that are already available on our website. Um, but next I wanted to talk about chapter logos, um, which are very important. Um, all chapters should be using the approved logos uh, that are provided by the SACNIS National Office. Um, a few things to consider, um, is that these logos should not be modified. Um, that includes don't change the color, the font, text, the aspect ratio, or cropping. Um, I know chapters do want to get creative sometimes, and we'll talk a little bit more about kind of um, creativity later down uh, in the Q&A section. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to mention here is to also make sure to use these logos. And briefly, I'll go over specific examples of what some of those approved logos look like. But the big thing is that we want to share um, just like how we have specific color um, for the chapter logos or, yeah, specific colors for chapters that are different than the national um, green colors. We would prefer that chapters do not use the, the green national SACNIS logo um, and instead use um, either the custom logos or these general logos that I'm about to go over. Um, so we essentially have two different versions of the custom and the, um, and the general logos. Essentially, uh, 
primary one, which is the rectangle one that you're probably very familiar with. Um, and then we also have a secondary version that's more of a circular, um, circular shape. Uh, essentially, we encourage you to use like the primary one uh, as essentially being on all your publications, whether it's like on online stuff or like printouts or merchandise that you may want to create for your logos or for your chapters, I mean. Um, the secondary one, you can really use either or. Um, the secondary one was mainly created specifically for social media, uh, especially like your uh, profile account, because I know that has like a circular crop. So we wanted to make sure to have logos that were um, more more appropriate for social media, because it, it looks very weird to have those rectangular chapter logos trying to squeeze into a circle. Um, so we wanted to give you options to use both. Um, so the custom ones are really for our official chapters. Um, once you get approved from us, you receive these chapter logos um, that have either your specific chapter name, or as you can see on these examples, the initials for your school. Um, I also wanted to show um, the two general logo ones. So the main difference here with these is they don't have that specific chapter name or the initials of the schools. Um, two main kind of use cases to be using the general version over the custom one is if you're not already uh, an official SACNIS chapter that's recognized by the national office, uh, but you're in the process of starting a chapter, you can definitely use either of these two general logos. Um, and then the other use case scenario that um, we recommend that you use this is if your school has uh, particular guidelines as far as um, restrictions of using the school name within our logos and they kind of want them to be two separate things, um, then in those case we would recommend using one of these general logos like essentially right next to your official school logo that is approved by your school. So. Uh, definitely you want to check in with your institution and see um, which of the logos, if they do have any restrictions with um, using their particular branding. Um, so here I wanted to share a link so that you're able to request those custom logos um, if you don't already have them. Um, this link will eventually be on our website. Um, along with the general logos, those should already be on our website which you can download. Um, but I wanted to share this in case you don't already have the SACNIS uh, custom logos and you're an official chapter. Um, yeah. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the purpose for um, the SACNIS chapter marketing. Um, so the purpose of this marketing is to promote your chapters, activities, and your impact. Um, we want you to share all the exciting things that you as a chapter are working on. Um, so some reasons why marketing is extremely important is that it's a great way to engage with your current members as well as recruit new members to your chapter. Um, you can form collaborations uh, within your organization and outside of your organization, as well as help to obtain funding. So with marketing, I think one of the important things um, is to be able to make sure that your current members um, are prepared to essentially be ambassadors for your chapters, right? Um, so before your chapter members go out to your local community or your school and try to recruit new members, they should be able to clearly and briefly describe one, what is SACNIS and two, like what exactly does your particular chapter do and like how would they benefit from joining um so that's one of the feedback that i typically get from chapters or questions that i get from chapters is like they're struggling to kind of um recruit new members um but kind of once i ask them to describe their situation and give me a little bit more information about their um how they're presenting their chapters like i kind of have seen common themes where it's like some chapters kind of just struggle to talk about SACNIS and their particular chapter. So we kind of wanted to provide a little bit of guidance, right? So um, 
I know this is a mouthful, and again, this is being recorded um, so that you can access this later down the road. Um, but essentially, it's important to have in a couple of sentences um, knowing how to describe SACNIS, right? Um, so SACNIS is a fully inclusive organization dedicated to achieving true diversity in STEM where the field reflects the demographics of the population. As the nation's largest multicultural and multidisciplinary STEM diversity organization in the country, SACNIS creates space where all members feel they belong and can embrace their intersectional identities. Um, I'm sure there's follow-up questions to all that, um, which we are working on creating um, more kind of talking points later down the road. So like, if you do beyond that, get kind of frequently asked questions um, so that those can hopefully address some of those upcoming questions that you'll get after that. But that in a nutshell is what, how to kind of describe what is SACNIS. Um, I also wanted to provide kind of what it, what are chap SACNIS chapters in general? Um, so really SACNIS chapters provide members the opportunity to be part of a local supportive community and receive professional development to help them succeed in their STEM career. Collectively, our SACNIS chapters are the on the ground ambassadors behind the SACNIS movement to achieve true diversity in STEM. Uh, so now you're probably curious of like what type of activities do chapters actually do, right? Um, so two kind of key things that I mentioned there are um, local supportive community and professional development, right? So here are kind of just briefly a few examples of kind of what chapters do in general. Um, so for professional development, it could be like uh, diversity and inclusion panels, um, you can talk about different STEM career pathways. So it's like, after you graduate, right? It's like, do you go into academia? Do you wanna go into industry, government, nonprofit? Um, so just kind of providing your members different opportunities and options that they have available to them. Um, a lot of chapters talk about uh, obtaining research experience. So that can be either at your current school is like trying to find a lab placement to get research. Um, it could be information on uh, applying to a summer research program, like an REU for undergraduate students. Um, and it's just really, or going to national conferences like the SACNIS conference and learning about different research opportunities. Um, and then other ways that you can help with your professional development is with your presentation skills, right? So it's like a lot of the students that are part of a SACNIS chapter and go to a lot of uh, STEM conferences like the SACNIS National Conference, um, a lot of chapters help with kind of preparing the abstracts and the uh, practicing your presentation and just a lot of like the SciComm skills as well, which is really important. Um, some examples of uh, local supportive communities, um, chapters help each other by uh, doing writing workshops, right? So it's like, if you want to apply to go to a conference to get your paper uh, accepted to be presented, or if you're like planning to apply for a grant or a fellowship, um, it's always important to get feedback from your um, community, right? So it's like having these workshops really helps uh, chapters provide that support um, having mentorship uh, is very important, whether it's with faculty that supports the chapter or um, peer mentoring. So it's like students, either like graduate students helping undergraduate students, or it's advanced undergraduate students kind of helping out the next generation of undergrads. Um, some social activities can include like game nights. Um, a lot of chapters now are doing kind of like, a lot of this stuff can be in-person and virtual. Uh, so that's really important to note as well. So it's like some chapters do game nights. Um, I know there's a lot of apps that you can do like virtual game nights. Um, and then end of the year or semester celebrations, I think are always a great positive way to kind of help develop that or build that community, right? So it's like celebrate each other's wins. Um, it could be like graduations at the end of the year, um, celebrating your members um, who get their PhD. Um, so yeah, 
can be super creative, but those are just briefly some ways that uh, chapters provide professional development and are a local supportive community. Um, so now I wanted to take a moment and kind of like, you don't have to do this right now during the webinar, but afterwards, this is kind of something to consider, right? Is like, what does your specific chapter do? Um, so kind of three things I challenge you to do is um, work with your chapter members, right? And summarize the impact and the activity that your particular chapter does. Um, and basically summarize that in a few sentences and make that readily available to all of your members um, so that when they do go out into your um, school's community, they're able to better represent your chapter and they're be better, essentially better ambassadors to your chapters, right? Um, and then I also encourage you to share, once you do finalize that, um, share that on social media so that other chapters can see what you're doing. Um, and I definitely encourage you to use the hashtag SACNIS chapter so it's easier for other chapters to find out what you're doing. And I think this is still me. Um, so those are kind of ways to prepare to talk about your chapter, right? Um, so ways to kind of implement your kind of branding and your marketing. Um, I think I summarize it into three kind of major things, right? It's like by word of mouth. And again, this could be either in person or virtual ways, um, but these could be like in recruitment events, um, in your classrooms, in your research labs. Um, it could be via email um, or other social events where you're using kind of this um, these toolkits that we're providing you, right? So like the proper branding for your chapter logos, proper colors for like the materials for the print and digital materials, um, and then being able to articulate like what is SACNIS and what your chapter does. Um, so print and digital materials, uh, examples of that could be flyers. Um, they could be graphics that you do for online stuff. Um, or if you want to create marketing stuff for your chapter, or like t-shirts, sweaters, stickers, or any other swag that you want to create for your members, um, highly encourage you, again, to use those approved chapter logos and um, the colors we talked about. Um, and then finally, another way to promote your chapter is if you already have a chapter website um, or also social media, which is, I think, a big component, which I'll pass it over to Lauren to talk about as that's her specialty. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so social media uh, is very important when it comes to promoting a lot of your activities. Um, so some tips uh, to get started here are um, use at least one social media account. Um, it's great if you can use, you know, more than one. Uh, we've got our big four uh, is what we call them here is the um, is Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. And I found that um, a lot of our chapters are extremely engaged on Twitter and Instagram specifically. Um, but, you know, each chapter uh, markets a little bit differently and has uh, different audiences in different places. So go ahead and experiment with uh, what is going to work best for you um, to try and get your message out. Uh, one thing that we do want to stress is that across these different platforms, um, you know, sometimes we see uh, that the names are just a little different and it can be really hard for people to search for your organization. So um, as an example, we might have um, Sockness UCLA, but then um, it'll be UCLA Sockness somewhere else. And so if you can try and keep your names uh, consistent across different accounts, uh, that makes it easier for people to be able to find you. Um, also, as Eric mentioned, use hashtag Sackness chapters. Um, it's a really great way to be able to connect with other chapters um, and see what they are doing in terms of their events. Also, um, the Sackness National um, uh, Organization follows hashtag Sackness chapter. So if there is a really awesome thing that your membership is doing, there is some sort of, um, you know, 
great accomplishment that you want us to shout out, um, make sure that you use that hashtag and tag at Sockness uh, because we love to share that kind of stuff with uh, the rest of our membership. So don't be shy, uh, really shout out everything that you're doing because we are watching and we're excited for you. So um, also uh, make sure that in your posting that you're posting consistently um, and consider having a specific chapter member that's dedicated to managing your social media accounts. That way you are not, uh, you know, doubling up on work. Um, you have someone who uh, can kind of keep a um, similar aesthetic across all of your posts. And uh, anytime you need to have something promoted, you know that there's an actual point person that you can go to each time for getting that up on social um, just to make sure that it gets done. And if you're wondering, um, if you're wondering how to do graphics, so not everyone is a graphic designer by trade. Um, however, uh, there's a really, really easy way to make graphics. Um, I actually use Canva every day. Um, so Canva is a really great tool that you can use to create um, graphics. It's free. And it's really, really intuitive. There are tons of templates uh, that they have already made for social media posts, brochures, flyers, and whatnot. And it's just as easy as drag and dropping um, and kind of customizing it to whatever you need. So I definitely um, encourage you to explore Canva and um, really practice your graphic design skills on there because uh, it's very, very easy. And it's a great way to just keep track of everything that you're uh, doing marketing wise. Um, also some social media tips, um, make sure that you are posting information on upcoming activities that you have in order to help with recruitment. Um, another great tip that I can give you um, in terms of recruitment and letting people on campus know about um, your specific events is to use uh, each school has typically like some hashtags that they use for, you know, student life um, and promoting certain activities. Make sure that you use those um, hashtags as well as hashtag Sockness chapters in your posts so that people maybe that are outside of the organization uh, can discover Sockness and uh, go to your profile and learn more about that. Um, you're also going to want to recap your events um, for members that were unable to attend. So uh, make sure to take lots of pictures or screenshots um, and let people know about uh, what they might have missed out on so that they won't miss out on your next event. Um, and like I said before, highlight those member achievements. Um, it's always great for us to see and it's great for all of the people at your school or your organization to see. Um, another thing that I have seen a lot of chapters do, and I really love this, is highlighting new members to welcome them into the community. Uh, when new um, uh, presidents were announced for the chapters, you know, they did an uh, introduction to these are the people that are on leadership for the chapter. Um, so it really helps to uh, help people inside the chapter get to know each other. And for people outside of the chapter, who might be interested in, um, in joining, uh, see that it's a very welcoming environment. So those are just some of the tips that we have for you. And we can address any more questions that you might have specific to social media in the Q&A section. Yeah, so with that being said, we'll start transitioning now to our Q&A. Um, just as a reminder, make sure to submit your questions using the Q&A feature. Um, be polite, mindful, and respectful. Um, and then feel free to share your institution or your location. So with that being said, I think I'll stop sharing my screen here and pull up some of these questions. Um, so Lauren, one question we have uh, from James is, uh, when they're creating a Facebook account, should they do a group or a page? That's a good question. Um, honestly, it's it's up to your preference, but I will say that I have found that Facebook group communications, um, if you're trying to communicate with members inside the organization, um, the groups have much better um, uh, 
sway with the algorithm, let's say. Um, it tends to show up in people's news feeds a little bit more and people can get notifications there. So when it comes to announcements um, to members that are within that chapter, um, I would say a group is a good way to go. It's also a really great place to be able to um, facilitate conversation on topics that are important to that group. Um, and then a Facebook page, while it has a little less um, it has a little less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's not showing up on people's feeds as much. The algorithm has given it less visibility. Um, but that's not to say that you should ignore it completely um, because there are uh, things that you could post on your Facebook page, such as your membership accomplishments. And if you tag um, Sockness, uh, our official like national page, um, then we can go ahead and share those things on our profiles as well. So it's really good for being able to uh, let people outside of the organization know what you're doing and being able to share in those accomplishments. So I hope that answers your question. It, it really is a preference thing, um, but those are just some of the successful uh, tools that I've seen so far. Yeah, thank you. Uh, James also asked, how do we navigate uh, working slash competing with similar organizations on campus, for example, ACES or SHIP. Yeah. Um, I think I would just say that what I highly encourage our chapters to do is collaborate with those um, other student organizations or student resources that you have on your campus, right? So it's not necessarily that you're competing with them. Um, but I think it's very important to collaborate with them because um, you can have overlap in your membership where some SAC, some of your SACNIS chapter members can be part of those other uh, student organizations. But I definitely encourage you to definitely work together. Like if you're doing similar workshops, so for example, if you're both doing um, workshops on like networking or um, how to create like a CV or a resume, like. I think it's going to benefit both of you to like get together, pull your resources together so that you do like one co-hosting event um, on that respective topic and you save yourself, um, again, those resources, you save your individual members time, right? So that instead of like having to do two separate events that are very similar, they now just have to go to one. Um, plus it also helps you with potentially expanding your membership because you get that exposure to for example, if you collaborate with the SHIP chapter, um, some of the SHIP members that may not already be familiar with SACNIS can learn more about SACNIS and vice versa. Some of your members can learn more about those other organizations. So I always look at it as try to collaborate as much as possible rather than competing with each other. Totally agree with everything that Eric said. And I think, um, you know, sitting down, even if it's just like once a month and being like, this is our calendar for the upcoming month or the rest of the year, here are some of the topics that we're going to be covering, um, makes it so that you never have to compete with um, promoting certain activities at the same time. Um, and everyone's just in the know so that it's not a matter of, should I go here or here? They can do both. Um, so yeah, just making sure that you uh, have a contact with each of those organizations chapters um, as well, and that you're in constant communication. Communication is key. Uh, let's see, uh, Jennifer asks, how do we go about inviting individuals to be panelists for SACNIS meetings? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I th although we didn't specifically address that here, um, I think just, again, having some of the stuff we did talk about, right, is like promotion. So it's like, if you can clearly articulate what is SACNIS and what your chapter specifically does, especially if this person that you're planning to invite is not already familiar with SACNIS, like that really helps when you reach out to them and in inviting them because um, you have kind of that essentially like an elevator pitch of right of like what does SACNIS do if you're already using social media um, to track like some of the activities and stuff taking a lot of pictures is very important you can kind of point to that if you have a website uh, point to that to kind of get them familiar with it um, but as far as specifically inviting them definitely emailing or um, uh, 
at least having an initial in-person conversation if possible is always uh, good. But I think especially in these times, definitely an email, um, just introducing yourself, introducing SACNIS if they're not already familiar with it. Um, and yeah, just reach out to people. The worst they could say is no. Um, Felix asks, what kind of merch do you recommend us making? Um, I think there are, it depends on what your chapter uh, wants. I know that um, sometimes chapters will make um, t-shirts or tote bags and things like that um, that they can use around campus. I've even seen things like um, little patches that you can put on backpacks and things like that, um, pins and so forth. Um, as long as you are using the, um, the Sackness chapter uh, logo as you are creating that artwork, um, you can feel free to make whatever kind of merch uh, you think that people would like. Um, what would probably be really helpful is when you're deciding what merch you want to make is taking a survey of what people would want. So, um, you know, come up with a couple ideas, um, maybe just some creative uh, things that you want to put on that merch um, alongside the logo and uh, have people vote on it and see what they would be willing to buy and um, yeah, and get creative with it. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's great. The only thing I would add on there is, yeah, you definitely address that. I was thinking of two things. One is obviously write your members feedback because you don't want to like invest in something that like nobody is going to use or purchase. Um, but I think the other second thing to consider is definitely your chapter budget. Um, so seeing what your budget is, how much different merchandise costs, because you also don't want to spend a big sum of money on merchandise if not a lot of people are gonna uh want to use it so definitely i think balancing those two things out and your um feedback is super important um let's see here cecilia has to request a sackness generic chapter logo do i use the same qr code um starting a chapter at tufts Ooh, yes um, so yeah, you can use that link to uh, request both. I think I have an option on there so that you can select if uh, you're requesting the custom logo or if you're just requesting the uh, general logo. So yeah, super excited to have a chapter at Tufts. I think we previously had one there in the past. Um, Carla asks, when do new chapters know if they've been approved, if they submitted an application? Um, we're currently working on that reviewing process um, and you should get an update from me definitely like in the next two or three weeks. Um, can I get the QR link? Oh yes, I will repost that. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, let me just go back and find that real quick. Um, another common question that we typically get is um, chapters wanting to create custom logos. Um, and I know a lot of chapters already do have logos uh, that they customize, um, which I th for us, uh, we definitely encourage our chapters to be creative. Um, we just ask that you whatever custom logo you're planning to do or artwork and not necessarily just a logo, but maybe sometimes you want to create kind of like those banner headers for like your uh, social media accounts or for a website. Um, definitely reach out to us um, as we would like to kind of go on a base by individual case, um, work with you on those logos. Uh, but essentially, yes, you can create them as long as you use them with your approved SACNIS logos that we talked about during this webinar. Um, let's see here. So Irma, I did post that link on the chat, I think. Uh, so hopefully you can uh, see it on there. And then I'll go over at the end of the webinar some, some of the resources and websites that we mentioned throughout the whole thing so that you can uh, take another look at those. Um, Uh, Daniel asked, when we request custom logos, 
uh, we receive rectangular or circular ones. So you'll get both. Um, so whether you're requesting the custom or the general one, um, we'll send you basically the set so that you have both options. And because um, sometimes you maybe want to use that rectangular one for like printed stuff or um, sometimes chapters um, make like the little pins that are like rectangulars. Uh, which are really cool to see. But then sometimes like if you want to use your social media account, again, you want to use the circular one. So we'll send you both so that you have that flexibility of choosing whichever one is more appropriate for the particular um, situation. Um, Carla asking about um, regional meetings. Um, so we're looking into uh, reaching out to our chapters as far as um when regional meetings are happening um so once we get more information we'll definitely post that on our website um Efrain, uh we're opened a new chapter at inter-american university of puerto rico aguadilla campus um so i know that your chapter is um one of the ones that's also being reviewed uh Efrain, so definitely you should get an update from us within like two or three weeks super excited to see more chapters in puerto rico um let's see i think those are the ones i don't think i missed any of them i think we one other all... oh sorry go okay. ahead <laughs> no, I was going to say one other tip um, that I wanted to bring up um, that might also help you all with uh, recruitment and um, getting out to new members is um, meeting with the heads of certain departments. Um, so I know, for example, some schools have specifically like an engineering um, department, uh, social media or um, someone focused specifically on the department of chemistry and things like that. Um, finding uh, the people who are running those social media accounts. So go to your department heads and say, hey, we're SACNAS. We would love to be able to um, share our activities with the people in these departments specifically. And then figuring out who might be running those social media accounts um, is really helpful so they can follow your chapter and then uh, see all of the things that you are up to. And then you have someone who can help to um, promote your activities uh, to people um, within the STEM uh, departments. Cool. So I think the last thing, unless we get any last minute questions um, that I wanna mention um, is somebody asked what resources are available, especially for newer chapters um, like Cornell. Uh, so this year we'll, we're doing a lot more um, calling it chapter sustainability training webinar series, uh, which this is part of uh, one of those webinars, right? So essentially we wanna provide, we are going to provide you this year um, several webinars uh, throughout the year to provide you more um, resources on like kind of best practices for running your chapter. Um, so this was the first of, I believe, six that we have scheduled so far. Um, we also have um, our national conference, which uh, we have chapter programming at. Um, this year we have a chapter leadership institute, um, which will provide more information about, but it's essentially uh, more training for members on how to be better chapter leaders. Um, we have our online community. So within your SACNIS membership, um, all of the chapters now have individual chapter groups that you can use to connect with each other. There's also an all chapter members group um, that basically gives you access to be able to communicate with all of the chapter members and advisors. Um, that are part of the SACNIS community. So the key thing to remember there is, A, you have to have a SACNIS membership. And as Lauren mentioned earlier, we do have a free um, membership level. Uh, so if you don't already have your membership or if it had already expired or you need to update the information on there, definitely make sure to go to sacnisorg slash memberships um, to get that updated. Um, and we did previously do a webinar with more information about um, those uh, chapter groups and like how to access those and stuff. 
Um, so um, you can look that at that webinar and kind of get more information of how to specifically join your respective group if you're not already on there. So those are just some of the things that we're doing with chapters. And um, we do now have a chapter resource page, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but essentially, you can go on there and uh, find a lot more information of like the webinars that we're doing, recorded ones, and everything else that we have planned. Um, so I think I'm just going to take one more look. I don't think there was any new questions um, now. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen again. Here it is. Okay. Um, share. Cool. So next steps. Um, yeah, so good segue here um, to talking about webinars, as I mentioned. If you go to sacnus.org slash webinars, um, you can see all of the upcoming uh, SACNIS webinars. So as I mentioned, we do have a series of chapter webinars that are coming up. Um, they're not all fully posted on there, but definitely check out that website because you'll also see not just the SACNIS chapter webinar, but you'll see other webinars that um, we're doing for all of our members as well. I believe um, next week, on the 10th, yeah, we're doing a webinar on introducing chapter annual reports. Um, so it's basically going to be a, a webinar to provide you an overview of the uh, annual reports that we're going to be asking you to submit later in the springtime. So definitely check out that uh, webinar to kind of know what the expectations of for that submission and any questions that you may have to know what you're supposed to be doing for those annual reports. Um, and then I believe also next week on the 12th, there's going to be a webinar um, for how to get into graduate school. So definitely check out that website. It has a lot of very, um, you can see all of the upcoming ones and all the previously recorded ones should also be available on there. Uh, the last thing I'd say on here is to um, make sure to do the uh, survey at the end of this webinar. So once you finish, you'll see a pop-up thing that really helps us with improving our programming, especially um, as we're doing more virtual programming this year. Um, very helpful. So please do that. And finally, if you enjoyed today's webinar, um, you can help us produce more like this and other webinars by making a donation um, in any amount to sacnus.org. Um, your donation goes toward more virtual programming, just like this one, um, as well as year round programs like chapters and leadership. So feel free to uh, visit sacnus.org slash donate um, to make your donation or to find other ways that you might be able to support us. Oh, and I would say that one of the new benefits for, I believe, um, one of the professional membership levels um, is that part of their uh, membership dues also get donated to um, the chapter that they choose. So if you know any professionals that you're trying to recruit to become part of this ACNIS membership, um, definitely know that there's um, one of those benefits where your chapter will definitely benefit. Um, so just to close up, I just wanted to share some of the resources and websites that we mentioned kind of throughout the webinar. So it's like you can go to sacnus.org slash membership to find out information about that. Um, if you just want to find out more information in general about SACNIS, uh, definitely check out sacnis.org slash who we are. Um, the page I kept mentioning about where you can find um, the various chapter toolkits is under uh, sacnis.org slash uh, chapters. And then within that page, if you kind of scroll down a little bit, you'll see other links to other pages. Uh, one of them is that chapter resources. So a couple of things you'll find on there is um, chapter branding toolkit that we mentioned earlier. I have more information about the chapter logos that we mentioned, um, the chapter colors that um, Lauren talked about earlier. Um, it has some talking points, uh, just marketing in general. Um, that's where you'll be able to find the form to be able to request the chapter logos. Um, you can find previously recorded chapter webinars on that page. Uh, and then there's also a 
Excel link that you'll find on there. That's basically a list of all the chapter activities that chapters did last year. So I highly encourage you to check that out. You can download that. It's like filtered by different types of activities. So it's like, if you wanna look at all the different types of professional development activities that chapters do, um, you should be able to easily sort through that. And that's just more information that's available and we'll continue to be adding more information on that website throughout the year. So definitely check that out. Again, that's on sacnis.org slash chapters and then under the resource page towards the bottom after you scroll down a little bit. Um, so with that being said, oh, and if you have any questions, uh, anything regarding chapters, definitely email us at chapters at sacnis.org. Um, and with that being said, I wanted to thank Lauren for being on this webinar with me and thank you for everybody who was on this webinar and all of the great questions that were submitted. Uh, thanks again and have a great day. Thank you.